All right, welcome to I Might Need This Later, a gaming podcast. I'm your host, Jesse. I have with me Joe and Connor. Yo. That would be Connor. Nice introductions, guys. You did your best. I can't ask for more. (laughs) (laughs) That is Connor laughing. Tis I. It's Connor. Okay. And Joe. Yeah, I'm Joe. Here we go. So we decided to do a gaming podcast because we love gaming, all things gaming, talking about gaming. Um, So my name is Jesse. I love a lot of different genres, mostly old school stuff, um, old school RPGs. I was a big Halo player, but I have played a lot of League and Skyrim and various other games since I was a wee little lad. I uh, mine. I was more taken up with uh, first-person shooters. I always played the COD series back, even when it was like Call of Duty Two and the original Call of Duty Medal of Honor. Those games, but now I'm more Apex, Fortnite, more the up-to-date first-person shooters. And I'm Joe. I I'm basically what you consider a cycle gamer, where I don't sit in any one genre for too long. I play a game for like a week, and then I'm on to the next game. Uh, my Steam library has hundreds of games probably that I've never touched because I just cycle through the same like 10 games over and over again. But if I had to like pick a genre that I, I really like, it's like old school, like SNES RPGs probably. It's funny because Joe cycles so hard, he'll play one game for like a million hours in the week and yep. then never play it again. Yeah, that's true. I, I played Game Dev Tycoon for like 350 hours straight in the matter in a matter of like two three maybe days. three weeks and no like two maybe three weeks <laughs> and then i haven't touched the game since so we are gonna talk all things gaming uh hopefully we will update update hopefully we will upload once a week uh, have a different segments that are pretty much be reoccurring uh segment one is going to be just called question uh this week the question is from joe yeah so uh what I want to know from you guys is everyone has a favorite gaming snack. Like we've always got something within arm's reach when we're sitting down and we're getting into the nitty gritty of our games. So what is your go-to gaming snack? Uh, Jesse, I want you to go first. Uh, definitely wings. I like the, the sauce all over the keyboard. Oh, all right. That's amazing. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> My favorite. I don't want to see what your keyboard looks like. <laughs> it's not good. Uh, the, you can't, the compressed air is not saving it. The, so my favorite gaming snack for sure is they have those pretzels with the peanut butter inside of them and they come oh. in like the huge jug. And I feel like I just always will have one next to my, like next to my computer and I just like grab a few good to go. Not messy, salty, good to go. What about you? Kyle? Definitely right now, Cheez Its. Like I'm looking at a box of Cheez Its right now, and it's that's so good. It's so much flavor. They are so good, <laughs> and they would definitely be in my top five. So I have to give you props on that. Right, I can't do the like flavored ones though, because then it, it get. I'm not like Jesse. I get. I don't want the dust in my keyboard, so I just do <laughs> the ex. Just the extra toasties, fine with me. <laughs> he still got dust in his keyboard. Yes, I do. Everywhere. So the <laughs> second segment we're gonna do will be either news or some kind of update on different things going on. Um, This week, obviously, there's a lot of news with PS5 coming out and the Xbox Q913 3.0. I don't even know what Xbox... I'm not an Xboxer, so I have no idea. Connor, maybe you know. It's It's the Xbox Series 1X. X, Something like... I don't know. Yeah, Xbox Xbox Series X. (laughs) Um, And then... Obviously, uh, Keanu, the Keanu game, Steampunk Cyberpunk 2077, got, uh, it got delayed again. Yeah. Got delayed again, yep. which is unfortunate. But the big thing I want to talk about this week is something that maybe not, a, it's not news, but it's something maybe people don't know about. Uh, it's called the Humble Bundle. Uh, if you've never heard of it, it's a pretty awesome thing. I think it's just humblebundle.com. Yep. It's pretty much like you donate, it's like five, 10, $12 something in that range, and you get a bunch of games for free. So the money goes to charity, and you get a bunch of games. You can also do a month, whole, humble bundle. Humble bundle. Whew. <laughs> and also, 
You can also do a Humble Bundle monthly, which is what I do. I think it's like $12 a month, and you get your choice of 12 games every month. Now, obviously, there's going to be some stinkers. Now, Joe was talking about games in your Steam library you've never played. I have at least 450 games in my Steam library I've never played before. But I've gotten a lot of games for very cheap that I've gotten a lot of enjoyment out of. I yeah, actually, only... sorry. Go ahead, Justin. Oh, I was all sorry. I was only mad because I got the Hubble Bundle monthly, and then so I bought Overwatch to play with Connor actually, and then like four days later, <laughs> the Hubble Bundle gave Overwatch for free to subscribers, and I was like, oh great! So I just gave it to my brother. But that even goes to show that it does play. It does give like I don't know, relatively decent games. Like Overwatch is that, that was a big game. I played it for years. Yeah, I mean, I it's still a pretty big title. Yeah, yeah. It's... Like, a lot of people are still playing. They're constantly updating the game with new champions, new heroes. Like, it's still a pretty popular game. And, and again, most of the games in my library as well come from the bundle. Like, it's a phenomenal, awesome website. So you guys should definitely check it out. Yeah, and it goes to it goes to charity too, which is cool. And it's not... It's, it's some obscure games, but there's some that were... I mean, I got a lot of hours out of uh, Seven Days to Die was on one of them. Um, there was an entire Star Wars Humble Bundle. Plus, Humble Bundle also has stuff for like software and ebooks and stuff like that. So, something to check out. Did you get Fallen Order off the Humble Bundle, or was that just something else? No, that was a uh, Steam sale or something. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. That, that would have been that would have been a good one. <laughs> yeah. That would have been nice. But I got every other one, like Battlefront and all those games that I have never touched. So to our main segment, which we will do every week, uh, we'll call it something. And in post-production, yeah. name, will figure name to be delayed. later. TBD. TBD. We'll call it TBD, <laughs> uh, where we have a topic. We're going to snake draft it. Each of us are going to pick four answers for the topic. And that's pretty much how it's going to go. So this week, the topic is our favorite video game character. And in the future, i.e. hopefully next week, um, you can send an email to us and put in an answer. And we will read it on the show for any good ones we find. So this week, we're going to do favorite video game character. If you don't know how Snake Draft works, pretty much with the three of us, I'm first pick. So I'll pick one. Uh, Connor is second pick. Yep, yep. yep. Connor will pick one, and then Joe will pick two. Back to Connor, then I'll pick two, et cetera, until each of us have four picks. All the picks will be unique, and it'll give us also it'll give us a little time to talk about why we pick things. Um, in the future, there'll be other con um, other questions that are very in depth, and so some of these we'll talk about a lot. But you know, we all like talking and listening to all things related to gaming. So I'll start it off. Favorite video game character? I. Had a lot. I, it was a hard one. I remember talking to Joe about this because we had talked about this question a long time ago. And I settled on, I'm, I, with my first pick, I'm going to go with uh, Big Tex. I'm going to go with Joel Miller. I was thinking, I'm a big Last of Us fan, and I was thinking, I'm a big fan of Ellie, but Joel is really the heart and soul of Last of Us. And I'm no spoilers for anything, but he makes a lot of decisions that it's hard for, it would be hard for any normal human to make. He's strong, you know, fortitude, emotionally, physically, mentally. It's just a lot of those things. It's almost like, I don't know how, if you guys, either one of you watched Walking Dead, but it's kind of like Rick Grimes. Mm, mm -hmm. You know, he's kind of the one that just, when you look, you're like, I need this to get done. And I, you know, I want it done well and done right. And then, you know, you need a leader, somebody like you always turn to, and I feel like Joel embodies all of that. Yeah, he's like, uh, uh, I would call him the classic, I, I would actually consider him more of an anti-hero than anything else, because he doesn't always make the right decision, but his convictions lead him to make his decisions, and he feels he's doing it in the best of, with the best of intentions, but it's not always the best result. And for, for Joel, it's and it completely agree. It's not always, it's what he thinks is right. And sometimes, sometimes you're not always right, but as long as you have the conviction 
and you're all in on whatever you're doing, it, it really turns to positive things. I mean, you can look at all of our lives and all your lives and sometimes you may not always be right. may not, may not always be right in making the best quote unquote decision, but for you, it's the best thing for you as you feel like how you feel. And that's really yeah. what matters. I mean, he definitely made some very, very selfish decisions throughout the entirety of that game, but you, uh, you, but you can feel for him because it's what you would do in his situation as well. You would make the same choice because, you know, I, I mean, the thing that I got from it is that family comes first. Yeah. And family is not always blood. Yep. It's hard for All me right, to have any, hard for me to have any opinion because I haven't played the game. So there's that. <laughs> well, it's like so my second pick would have to be Master Chief. I feel like from Halo, yeah. he is so iconic and just how <laughs> that whole series just to me had the had me on the edge of my seat the whole time. Like I remember, to me the most iconic moment is when Master Chief is like getting ready to throw the bomb out of the the out of the like ship in space and cortana's like what if we miss and he's like we won't and he's like he's just such a badass and he just undergoes so much i'll add a little the master chief was also on my list it's he has some of them some very iconic lines he's such a powerful character he's almost like this he's almost like the poster child for xbox talking about how i'm not an xboxer i bought an xbox strictly to pay, play halo back in the day and it wasn't because, you know, it was a lot because to do with Master Chief. And I mean, I also remember RVB, Red vs. Blue growing mm -hmm. up. And yep. I mean, Halo, like, you know, I fell in love with Halo and obviously Master Chief had a, had a, a lot to do with that. Like, I just felt so, like, connected to like, every mission. I was I just, I don't know, emotionally attached to Master Chief. And I was so sad at the end. All right, so I get two here. Okay. Um, for the first of my two picks, I got to go with my boy, the Blue Bomber, Mega Man. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, nothing needs to be said about him. He's just a, a legend that spanned decades with tons of games, tons of off, uh, offshoots to his games, tons of spinoffs to his games. Like, uh, he's recognizable, and he transcends generations. Like, no more needs to set, be said about it. I, I think I'll, the coolest thing for me is obviously, all everybody knows the platformers, but I just love how it's like so many different genres too. Because there was like the card game thing, yep. and obviously mm -hmm. the platformers. There was the RPG. Uh, yeah, like Mega Man Legends. Yep. Yeah, there was the soccer game. Yep. <laughs> it's great, it's I didn't know they had a soccer game. That's nuts. Yeah, they had a soccer game. Yeah, pretty much any genre that you can think of, Mega Man has a game for it, probably. That's uh, awesome. And then for my second pick, um, I'm going to go with John Marston. Uh, I don't know if either of you have played Red Dead Redemption. He's the oh, main yeah. character from the first game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's the main character from the first game. And I cannot stress enough like how badass of a character he is like obviously he comes with his flaws um, yeah in his own right but when you when he literally just walks up to people and says my name's john marston and you're dead like <laughs> how more, more badass can you get than that agreed agreed and the and ending just, of that game is so good yeah just the entire storyline that you progress through 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 rdr is just like you become so connected with his story and um and then when it turns out the way it does, like, it's really uh, gut-wrenching. It really is. And given for, like, when it was made, like, it, obviously looking back on it now, it kind of, like, comparing it to, like, Red Dead Redemption 2, it kind of looks like trash. But for the ter the time that it was made, it looked pretty good. Like, I remember playing through it, and I was like, this looks amazing. Yeah, I actually fired it up pretty recently. I was playing RD, uh, the original RDR, and, like, the graphics still hold up. Like, the controls yeah. are a bit clunky. Yeah. But... But the the graphics still hold up, right? The idea was there. Yeah. All right, Connor, you're up. So my next one is ba, 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 ba. my phone locked. Edward Ken Ed Edward Kenway from Assassin's Creed yeah. Black Flag. He's so great. He is such a badass. Like he, I, I love how he. I feel like he's like 
kind of like how you said earlier, like the anti-hero. Like he kind of stumbled into becoming an assassin and kind of falling into the brotherhood, but he was always looking out for himself being a pirate, you know, drinking, looting, stealing, like doing whatever he wanted to do. And I just thought that was great, but how he just ends up, you'd kind of see him play his story out and turn in from a pirate to a pirate that's kind of doing good better things <laughs> yeah he never really wanted to be an assassin he kind of just fell into it because like if i remember correctly he just like stole somebody's assassin yeah and kind of like posing as them and yeah exactly and he was like oh let's see where this takes me i want money so okay <laughs> like cool yeah and then he ends up like um you know getting in trouble with all the, like the the british fleets and the american fleets like he was just, yep. the whole it was basically pirates of the caribbean meets assassin creed and yeah it was great it really was and i loved the the like because i had never played like any like i don't know naval games i guess so, so like i thought it was I, I really liked the enjoyed like being able to upgrade a ship and like really being a pirate and being like i'm gonna go jump on this dude's boat and steal his stuff and take his crew like i loved it yeah and then aside from that like honestly like still to this day like black flag still has some of the best like water graphics that i've ever seen in any game like, absolutely the water, swimming through the water and just like just the graphics in general just very crisp and clean so like very impressive and they spent yeah especially because you can do like the diving stuff where you're like going and trying to like get the sharks on, you know and you're like it really yeah. feels like you're like diving in the caribbean like going through looted like shipwrecks it's super super immersive and i love it all right. So I got two. Um, so I'm going to stick with the same theme I had for the first one because I was, I'm going to use it either way. It's hard to choose between two characters in one game because I think they both merit a spot. But mm. I'm going to go with Clementine. Mm. Well, him and Lee were on, or her and Lee were on my list as well. Yeah, I was choosing between Clementine and Lee, but and Lee. Lee, is, Lee is very similar to Joel. Um, but I'll go with Clementine, who's ironically very similar to Ellie. <laughs> if, that, if nobody's, if you haven't played the Walking uh, Telltale Walking Dead games, those games are very good. I only played the first two seasons, I think. Yeah, but I did as well. I mean, it's pretty much like an interactive movie, and Clementine, she's a you know little girl, and she is kind of growing up almost. I'm not gonna say growing up, but she's. I mean, she's forced to take adulthood because of exactly. what's going on around her. Like she's forced to grow up way faster than she intended to mm -hmm. because of the environment. And it's it's a zombie game, obviously. So, but it's all, it's more about the characters, the relationships, the decisions. And Clementine is forced to make so many decisions that a child just sh shouldn't have to make at that age. Uh, no spoilers, obviously, but it's, I just, I love her, all the things she does, what she stands for, just the strength in her character. Um, and the second one, or my third pick, the second in this wheel, I'm going to go with Voss Montenegro. Um, he, Voss is from Far Cry. Yeah, aha, uh -huh. that's why it sounded familiar. I was like, weren't we yes. just talking? Why does that sound familiar? So, Voss is one of the first, I guess, villains, bad guys, whatever, that I legitimately, like, think about, and I'm like, that dude is terrifying. This is, Far Cry is not, it's not a horror game. But Voss is legitimately terrifying because of how insane he is. Like, the things that he says, the things he believes, he is a terrifying, terrifying character, which works out well because, well, he's the person you got to deal with a large percentage of the game. Right? Yeah, you, you, you and I haven't played, I don't think, is that, I can't remember if that's the one I played, but I know you and I had watched videos and he really is truly terrifying. You the one from Far Cry 3? Yes. Okay, he's, then all right, I know what you're talking about then. He wears like the pink suit, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. No. No? no, 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 he's the, um, he's the bald guy. Yeah, the bald, the guy. bald. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Your Mine. Pick. Oh, it's so I had to go. I couldn't decide between the two. So it was either uh, Marcus Phoenix or Dom from Gears of War. I definitely decided to go with Dom just because that was the first game I had ever played where I like 
like I mean, I, if I spoil it, it's been out for years. He should have played it by yeah. now. But you know what I mean. But when he when his wife dies and he drives his like he like saves his squad by like driving into that horde and he's just like like ah like screaming Maria. I like literally like cried, and he dies and I was like, wait, what? There's there's no more Dom. What do you mean? He's been in the first two games. Like, what do you mean? And so that just broke. Oh, I just felt so attached to him. See, I never really played Gears other than the first one for maybe like an hour or two at somebody else's house. So I never really got into Gears because, again, like Jesse, I'm not really a, a, a huge Xbox, Xbox player. Yeah. Yeah. But I know that Marcus Phoenix and Dom are both like super fan favorites of that in that series. Oh, they're so good, and it's like oh, just watching their story unfold and like how much just bullshit they go through, and like because they have like obviously they're soldiers, and so they have like kind of like that brotherhood mentality, and like just the things they do for each other is just mind blowing. I obviously haven't played much Xbox stuff. But I did play Gears 1 for a while when I had an Xbox. The most iconic thing to me, actually, um, I don't know which one. I, I guess it's Marcus, but I'm not sure. I don't know if you guys have seen, but the commercial for Gears of War 1 was unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Like, made me want to play it. It's like he's running through the he's running through the streets and like getting in gunfight and then he jumps and the song is mad world mad world by gary jules oh it's so good that, yeah if you've never seen that commercial go look it up you could probably just google or google you probably youtube uh gears of war one commercial and he like go he like jumps through a window and then there's a huge like monster in front of him and it the song mad world is playing i remember seeing that and i was like wow they i want to play this game so bad i've not seen a commercial since then for a game where i'm like i need to play this game so bad it really t like pulls you in like just the way they did the music like it really was it looked like it looked like a movie and it just like i was like i need to know more like what what did he just jump into yeah what is my guy about to deal with right now <laughs> like oh my god yeah all right so for my third pick, uh, I had to go back and forth on this one for a little for a little while. Like I had, a, I've obviously a huge list of characters that I, I I'd love to death. But this character, um, not only is just he a great character and very iconic in his in his universe, but the game that he's attached to is just something that has been um, a game that's like traveled with me as i've been growing up so it's uh i'm gonna go with deckard kane from diablo mm. <laughs> yeah so obviously uh, as jesse knows like i was a huge 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 diablo 2 player uh way back when i don't want to date myself obviously but way back when uh i was a huge diablo 2 player like i mean like i would literally play 12 to 16 hours a day just farming and and doing runs and literally like selling items for money blizzard i didn't say that you didn't hear that blizzard <laughs> um but just i just have this like kind of like attachment to deckard kane because in the in then when it came to the third game after so many years of playing diablo 2 and the third game came out and i ran through the story for the first time and then he ends up dying like i was like crushed by him dying like in the game like i knew it was eventually going to happen like he's he's super old and he's just constantly trying to fight demons and, and banish demons and like inevitably it was all going to catch up to him but um it was just he's just such an an, an iconic and, and like connecting character for me it's like throughout my life like a lot of a lot of like great moments and 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 really terrible moments in my life like kind of like revolved around like this whole diablo series so it's like it's very like attached to me and then for my last pick, I'm going to go with somebody like super obscure that I, I guarantee neither of you have heard of, but you've definitely <laughs> heard of the game. Bowser? Yeah. <laughs> Bowser, no. So his name is his name is Arislam Durai. Nope. I guarantee none of, yeah, no idea who that is. So he's the, the historian and narrator of Final Fantasy Tactics. Mm, interesting. 
Yeah, so he's the one that, like, he sits with you, the player, and, like, tells you the story of the War of the Lions, and, like, he uses this this document that was passed down in his family for generations. It's called the Germanic Scriptures. So somewhere in the middle of the game, uh, the main protagonist, his name's Ramza, comes into possession of these Germanic Scriptures. Uh, and what those Scriptures consist of is basically uh, the biography of this character named Saint Ajora, who's basically the game's Jesus. He's, like, the religious head. Like, he's the Jesus. He's, like, written to be, like, this savior demon killer. But the Germanic Scriptures is a biography written by one of his disciples showing that he was just, like, this regular man. And he was a spy at that. Like, he infiltrated neighboring empires, sowed disorder. And obviously, this, the church doesn't want this information to get out. Like, because it exposes all of their lies. So later on in the game, Ramza, who has these scriptures, meets a young uh, astrologian. His name's Olan. And he ends up giving the scriptures to Olan because the church is, like, chasing Ramza throughout the entire of the game. They, they want to burn him as a heretic. So he gives the scriptures to Olan, who he feels that he can trust. Then, fast forward generations later, these those scriptures have been passed down to Araslam, um, who writes this thing called the Darai Papers with the intent of exposing the church yet again and showing that Ramza was actually the hero of Ivalis and not Delita, which is what was written in the whole San Ajor of BS. But, of course, the church catches up to him and eventually executes him for heresy. But, like, this whole family was trying to expose the church for all of their evilness uh, through generations and generations. So I just thought he was a really cool character. That does sound cool. I never played the game, but, like, I'm literally, like, intrigued. <laughs> I think of like like Final Fantasy Tactics is basically like the War of the Lions from British history turned into a video game. Okay. Or the, sorry, the War of the Roses from British history. Okay. I I I as well have played Tactics, and I can attest it's a fantastic game. You have to enjoy the style though, because it's a top-down kind of tactical, yeah, asymmetric combat. tactical RPG. Yeah, it's a lot of fun though. A lot of customization with your. With your team and the storyline's fantastic you fall in love with all the characters it's one of those games where like you can fall in love with every character and like the graphics are just like i mean this is ps1 you know just the best they could do at that time but the gra- <laughs> yeah but the thing is like you the you the character development's unbelievable like un unbelievable yeah and like grounds that goes through this whole like being a noble then not wanting to be a noble because he sees what they're doing to the common class which is kind of like a parallel into today's society which i I found really interesting and then he like goes through like the, the the typical rpg where he's like running around killing demons and then ends up saving the world and then the church goes has the audacity to literally just erase him from history and say he did not exist saint ajora is the best and saved the world It's it's a crazy story. It's great. It's great. Can't say enough about it. So that's, <laughs> that's my last pick. Eric Lamderai, the historian from Final Fantasy Tactics. All right. All right. All right. So my last pick is probably from oh, it's from Overwatch. But I, I don't know if y'all ever watched like the um like the Overwatch short like clips like movie kind of things. If oh, yeah, not, they're all fantastic. But um, Widowmaker. Oh, her short where she's trying to kill like the pres like Zenyatta's race is I freaking love her. She's French. She has a beautiful accent. She's flirtatious and she's deadly, and I love it. And just how <laughs> she like she's falling mid air and still um, man while fighting Tracer manages to shoot the president in the head and then still evade tracer it was like oh she's just wonderful yeah the whole that whole interaction between widowmaker and tracer through that whole short like it, it's really great and like i like how their story mm-hmm. is like intertwined like through different uh, videos and, different and videos and yeah yeah exactly like, it, it's great. Like they really did a great job with like building their backstory together. They really did because I think the the other one where they're like connected to is when uh, they're trying to steal Doomfist's thing. His like ha- his fist and Reaper and Widowmaker show up, and it's Winston and the Tracer holding yep. them off. Like just those shorts. I used to, I like I was I feel like I heard a rumor that they're starting a Netflix series, but I would love for that to be true just based upon the shorts because. 
they deserve to be movies or shows or it's would be fantastic and i feel like it would have a huge following it always makes me laugh or it's interesting like what percentage of people like in some of these games overwatch for instance league for instance um street fighter whatever games like that like how much of the actual player base that play the game know the lore behind like the characters right it's it's probably pretty low because i i played i played a bunch of overwatch no clue no clue (laughs) i played a bunch of league no clue so that's it's it's sad like the developer he spends all this time to develop this like intricate and intertwined backstory of all the different characters and like i don't know my my guess would be like 10 or 15 percent of people actually pay attention to actually watch it or follow it or look for you i agree with you on that so uh we'll do a honorable mentions after um because i'm sure you guys have some to honorably mention <sighs> man i have so many left i I'm going to go with Elizabeth Comstock. I mm. so I knew you were going to do that. I was, I I was thinking bunch, about it too. <laughs> yeah, I had a bunch. I think she's just the most like elegant character. She's like, she's beautiful and not in the way like, oh, she's an attract. She's just beautiful in all she does. You know, like her character, the character development, the storyline that goes through her. The, you know her her friend the birdo um like just everything about her and her movement and everything she could do between you know going uh be- going between times and stuff like that i just think she was such an obviously that game was like mind blowing um and she was a big reason for it and it's a lot of these games like i really enjoy i enjoy them because i get attached to the character the main theme for all of mine is you look at it is like you get attached to the character that you're trying to quote unquote save and sometimes in the end that character wasn't the one you need to save mm-hmm. they were the one that ends up saving you or they were the one in not quote unquote in charge but they were the one running the show the whole time and i just i love the i saw um comic-con it might have been four or five years ago there was a woman who was cosplayed as elizabeth elizabeth comstock and it was, I mean, eerie. Like, she had the whole, I mean, look down. She had that personality down. It was just, uh, it was an amazing sight to see. I mean, sometimes you do cosplay as, you know, look like the person. Yeah, that makes it easier. <laughs> that makes it easier. She she didn't have to get a wig. And, I mean, the dress is just so, like, amazing. Mm-hmm. The fact that she's like, yo, you're out of bullets? Here's some bullets, you know? Here's what? some bullets. I was, Elizabeth, where did you get those bullets? I found them. Here you go. Yo, I found them. Here you go. Middle, uh, of, so, com- middle of combat just throws it to you. So I have a few honorable mentions. I'll just go over them quick. Uh, I had to write down Parappa the Rapper. Well, he's on my list, too. I put him yeah. down. Uh, yeah. I wrote down Chris Redfield because i big Resident Evil fan of my... Yeah, I, I actually had Jill on my list from Resident Evil. Ooh, and, Jill uh, as well, yeah. The only, the only other one I had on here was Amumu from League of Legends. I think Amumu is the most adorable character in League. Uh, just a little sad mummy who just wants to be friends with you. Yeah, Jesse definitely simps for Amumu. <laughs> I, I think I'm too old to know what simp means, so... Oof. Don't explain it to me, I'm okay. good. No, Dang. we're not even going to bother. Not even going there. there. You go. <laughs> you guys, uh, do you guys have any other honorable mentions? Um, yeah, I, I, go ahead, but go ahead, you go first. Mine just had to be, uh, I kind of already said one of them was Marcus from Gears of War, um, and then Mercy from Overwatch, just because she is so beautiful, <laughs> and I love her to death, and all she does is heal people and help people, and I love it. Joe's going to go nuts. He's gonna, he's gonna... Yeah, I got I got a bunch of... Yeah, uh, give us a uh, few. <laughs> Cratch Bandicoot. Like, <laughs> when he's one of my favorite form that ever existed uh nathan drake from uncharted um gordon freeman like i can't believe nobody mentioned gordon freeman yeah, from not the a half-life fan. series not a half-life fan you're a half-life fan you just don't know it yeah something like that. <laughs> um i from golden sun as of you played golden sun uh, huh. it's an rpg series from Game boy advance nope Nope. Uh, Agent Forty Seven from Hitman. Yeah, he's he's a great character. And then um, Spyro the Dragon. 
and Fox McCloud kind of round out the one. Yeah, I gotta, love, I really... gotta love Fox McCloud. Yeah, Fox bit only. Um, there's a story that, um, not a story, but I obviously played Super Smash Bros. 64 a long time ago, and a buddy of ours always played Fox McCloud. Now, um, my friends and I, Jesse included, we only played on uh, a custom setting, which was 99 stock <laughs> with 200% damage. Items were bombs and motion sensors <laughs> on high frequency on Hyrule Castle. That was what we played. So it was just mayhem for 99 stock. And and he always played Fox and not involved in any of the fighting. We just called him Opportune Time because he never did anything. And then somehow <laughs> no. was always in the fight. <laughs> there was nothing. We it's just called him Opportune Time. Joe. It's just me, me and Joe just duking, duking it out. It out. Yeah. And the our fourth player just yeah oh man yeah good times good times yeah <laughs> I have like because there's the 300 the total kills that I that I could have and vice versa and me and Joe would have like 150 175 really, and he would have like 40 You're like what is he doing <laughs> the shooting me with the pew pews with the pew pews yeah, that's all he did for the whole game so Fox McCloud definitely on the list as as a character I love and hate at the same time there you go. Did the bombs so, hit him if he used his little shield things? Nope, they bounce off of him. Of, of, of course. Yeah, of course. So, we are, I might need this later, a gaming podcast. Every week, we're going to hopefully put out a podcast where we talk about gaming. Next week, our question will be a video game that we wish we never played. It could be for various reasons. It could be because you wish you could play it for the first time. It could be because of some negativity it brought to your life. It could be because of so many reasons. Uh, if you have a video game that you wish you never played, shoot us an email at I might need this later, agp at gmail.com. And maybe we'll read it on our next show where we'll be doing a little bit of the same. Uh, does anybody have anything to add before we head on out of here? Just in addition to. Um, if you have any ideas about answering the question for next week, if you have any characters that we missed from this week, definitely send those in as well. Uh, let us know who your favorite character will die. We, we missed some and we'll read them up. Absolutely. Took the words right out of my mouth. There you go. Well, for Justin, Joe, and Connor, you guys keep gaming. Good night. See ya. Bye-bye. <laughs>